do I love about it? I'm, I'm completely obsessed with it. I do actually think about it all the time. What can I shoot? How can I shoot? Where can I shoot? Um, that would be interesting. Or oh, I must log that, um, you know, for an idea. Process is like meditation for me, I suppose. There's always so much going on in my head and in my life, and I feel like this, it just stops. This is my religion, I suppose, my, um, my breathing space. I always wanted to be a photographer. I always took pictures, always, always, always. I worked in fashion styling, asset management, headhunting, data inputting to fund the days that I could take pictures. And I'd never done anything with them or shown anyone. And I thought, if I don't do it now, I'm never, ever going to do it. So I put on a show. It then became an intrinsic and life-saving part of my life. Nothing else is with me at the time that I shoot. I just have my camera and me, and I try and I suppose I sort of channel whatever it is that's in me or around me. I never go in with a, a concept or an idea of what I want to leave with. My process is actually finding the picture. I would always choose to shoot in one of these old buildings. It is a moment when I shoot and when I'm in them. It's like between acts and a play, you know, they've had this life. Someone may have lived there for 50 years. They've had their family there. They've grown old there. They might have died there. There's all of this there. I don't know if you can have a romance with a house. Maybe that's a bit of a weird thing, but that's, that's sort of what it is. It's like this amazing, strange little dance of love and understanding. And then someone will come in and the carpets will go up and it will be made someone else for their next act. And I feel like it's a sort of documentation of this strange little love affair. Twinned with the love of photography, the love of the human body. I was taking pictures in my stepfather's factory, which was beautiful and full of different surfaces and shiny things and huge machinery. And I thought, God, what would be really beautiful in there is like a lump of flesh amongst all the surfaces and shiny colors. And I took the picture and it all made sense that that's where it should go. I build the picture every time I take the shot. I go back and look at it and think, well, oh, that's working, that's not working, until I find the shot. You know, it could have taken me an hour to get to that stage. I then have to remember each part of my body is, I've got to point that toe, I've got to make sure that I'm, you know, my neck is tilted and that my little finger, you know, so every, the muscle memory involved is actually quite, quite intense. It's really important that my pictures have an element of what it is to be human. When you look at paintings of new models, they're sort of alluring and on a chaise long and looking elegant and beautiful. And I thought, there's so much more than that. There's humor, there's desperation, there's, I'm strong. I suppose just physically, I wanted them to look interesting and dynamic and funny and fresh. I can't stop now. It's only going to get more interesting as I get older. And when I started this 20 years ago, I had a relatively young body. I hadn't had kids yet. I'm now entering middle age, which in itself is a fascinating time. When I shoot, I'm naked, I'm alone. My body's a tool to work with, and it happens to be a woman. It's what I choose to show and what I don't. 
it's very candid, isn't it? My face isn't in them because they are figurative. They're about the body and I want the body to be the thing that communicates. When there's a face in an image, you just immediately are drawn to the face and then that really then becomes a picture of me. I don't ever want to look like I'm in terrible pain, but I do think that there is beauty in so many odd and precarious and sort of relatively ugly things. I like that. I like seeing beauty in things that other people don't. <laughs>